I was on my own and I always said to myself and the people around me like you don't have control about what's gonna happen so all you can do is just always work hard and and, and then just train to your best potential your highest is not your highest your lowest is not your lowest you have to always keep pushing my name is Francis Techi Atuahene I'm from Ghana and I'm a professional soccer player for um, FC Dallas in the MLS. When I was growing up, it was just more like just playing soccer at the time, because like, that was the only thing that really, really kept me going and made me more excited every time like, I wake up in the morning. It, it, it was an escape because it was my happy place, and the minute I know I'm not playing, I know life was completely different, you know, so I was always, always glued to the soccer ball, which, was, um, which turned out to pay out pretty well for me. Primarily, I grew up with my grandmother. She took care of everyone. She did an amazing job, and um, and I miss her a lot. And I, I talk to her every Sunday, and and, and, and it's, it's pretty good. And when people see a young kid playing, doing well, especially when the person is playing without not wearing soccer cleats or like um, not wearing the proper like um, gear, like they, they oftentimes come to you and like they'll take you out, buy you food, and then like they'll do their best and get you cleats. There's a lot of people that do that. And, and I was one of the fortunate kids in my village that was like lucky enough to be able to receive few gifts, like little money to get food. And sometimes I'll take that, that food home, share it with my cousins. And, and, and it was amazing. And because and of that, I was always like, wanted to work hard, wanted to play and then uh, um, wanted to enjoy, you know. I was always playing behind the building that we lived in. Uh, like it was just a small tide and my cousins and some of my friends nearby, we always would just like put a little two stones together and we always play at the back. Uh, that was my earliest memory. Um, and then I, right from there, they would keep telling me, oh, you're good, you should keep playing, you're good. So because of that, it kind of motivated me, you know, and it, 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 it kind of ignites some fire in me. So when you grew up in the environment that I grew up in, in a village like that, your one dream is get recognized and like uh, a, a soccer academy will come to your town and come like give you the opportunity to get out of your place. So every couple of months there will be like tryout in, in the village somewhere nearby. So I woke up one day and then they were like, oh, in two weeks there will be right to dream coming out for tryout. And I was like, oh my God, this is my opportunity. Like, this is what I, I, I gotta show up. All I know is they are soccer academy. And if, you, if you're a good soccer player, they take you away. That's all I knew at the time. The day come for the Right to Dream Academy to come for the tryout. I went there in the morning and they were like, <laughs> there were like about 200 kids like showed up. And, and they just, we just like play. It's like you play, so there's like seven V seven. And then they go on for five minutes, six minutes. And then they bring different players because there's so many players. And I remember I was sitting down the whole entire time. Like I never got on the field to I think about 30 minutes, 20 minutes till like the whole thing was over. Touched the ball twice, they took me out. And I was so confused because I was like, I sat there for all this time and then I came in and I barely even played. Um, and then among all those kids, they were like, they selected seven players. And I was one of the lucky ones. We figured like, now my life is good, like I'm gonna get education, I'm gonna get cleats, I'm not gonna worry about food and all this stuff. I, I got there and there were like about 150 players there and everyone is like the best from their place. And then we have to do another tryout for like, that went on for almost two weeks and after that they signed only five players. And I was fortunate enough to be one of those five players and, and that's when everything started for me. There were so many white people around, like I was so confused. I've never seen that many white people in my life at the time. So I was very intimidated. But overall, I think as the trial goes on, like they kind of ease you into it, like you go to class and, and it just, it, things started to feel a little normal. And that's when I started to really grasp like the educational part of the academy and then started playing and, and then and life was never the same. And I was 11 years old, now I'm starting to learn how to speak English. So I was way, way behind, but I think the best thing for me was 
first i was able to adapt quickly and second i knew the price of working hard like the results you're gonna get um because I, I figured there were people coming to the u.s for education every year and there were people going to the uk and playing football and also going to school so i figured since there's so many players there who wants to go to professional I, I i spread my attention play football and also study hard and the, the 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 great thing was because all the teachers almost all the teachers there were volunteers from the us and the uk like you are forced to learn because you have to speak english to them they have to teach you in english and that kind of motivated me and pushed me to like work hard and 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 the thing is i always had an attitude to to do better, to work hard, and that kind of helped me. Over my three years there, like, like they kept seeing improvement in my education, and I kept getting better, and that opened a lot of doors for me. <sighs> First of all, when I got to Connecticut, it was freaking cold. It was very, very cold, and, and it snowed everywhere, so I was like, what have I gotten myself into, you know? I wasn't coming here to play soccer initially. It was just to get a good education, um, work hard to get into college, and then hopefully if you are still working hard at a soccer, you get into um, the pros. So it was entirely different um, at the time, but it was, it, was, it, was, it was very difficult when I first got here. I mean, it's one of the, probably the top 10 or 15 private high schools in the country, so it was very, very challenging. But I had two things. I, I always have the attitude to work hard, and two, there were already right to dream players that are there. For me, I was mostly just making the right friends, going to see my teachers every night, and just like doing my best, and then just working hard, you know. Because I, I figured like, right when I got here in the U.S. and when I went to high school, I was on my own, and whatever path that I choose to do was gonna be like my responsibility. So. Everything that I did was just to make myself better. And then of course, I met my host family. Our first day, in, uh, we had a chapel uh, at the Hatchkiss. And the first person sitting on my left, his name is William Pasek. So when we first sat down, he just started talking to me. How are you? How was your journey from Ghana? Like we just started talking. And he asked me like, have you been to New York before? I was like, my first time here, like I just got to Connecticut, and he was fascinated, wanted to know more about me, uh, wanted to know soccer, wanted to know about Ghana. So we just kept talking, and he was like, and I think we had a long weekend was coming along, I was like, I'd love to take you to New York, like, because um, I, I was going to stay at the boarding school because I had nowhere to go, I was like, and then he was like, oh, I'd love you to take you to New York City, like, to meet my family, like, I'll show you around, I was like, that would be fantastic. He, he brought me home to his family and, and he showed me around New York because they live in New, uh, Manhattan. So they showed me around and that was, for me, it was, it was mind blowing. But I was living in, in, in Ghana and then I'm in the middle of Manhattan, like seeing all these tall buildings. I was, I was so blown away. Weekend, every other weekend where we don't have to be at school, the family would invite me home, stay with them and then when it's spring break or summer, like they'll bring me home and I'll travel with them and then eventually they became my host family. And at the time, because uh, at the very beginning I was very, very quiet. So every time I was with them, I never really say anything. But as time goes on, I started opening up, started talking to them and I started traveling with them and, and, and then it just took off from there. And now I talk to them almost every day. I wasn't gonna go back to after I graduated from high school, which is four years straight. So as two years in, it was it was very hard because I miss my grandmother, like I miss my friends at the academy, like and I miss my Ghanaian food, <laughs> most importantly. <laughs> and once I graduated from high school, I was so excited and because I was gonna go back to Ghana for the first time in four years. I had just gotten into Michigan. I was, everything was just like super like nice and I was very happy. 
two days before my flight, found out that I lost my passport. If I go to Ghana, I can still go to Ghana, but I need to get a new passport when I get to Ghana. And the time frame to get a passport is uh, three months in Ghana. Or I can stay and get an expedited passport in the US and the time frame is uh, seven weeks. So I, had, I was looking at my back and everything, ready to go to Ghana. And I was like, what a decision to make right now. So I ended up staying. And by the time I got my passport, summer school had started. So I never gone to Ghana. So I had to stay for one more year. And it sucked. <laughs> I was so pumped. So I had to stay for five years straight before I went back for the first time. And, and it was fun. And in the back of my mind, I've always wanted to be a professional soccer player. So the goal is to always play well, um, set a good example, um, give back to my community, and 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 just enjoy enjoy like the talent God is giving me. So that that was for me like I always use my soccer stuff to help the people around me. <sighs> See, when I was my junior year at Hotchkiss, the school I really wanted to go to was UCLA because it was so warm and I wanted to go to California. But when I went to Michigan, it was completely different. Um, well, first it was, it was pretty cold. I don't know why I was there in the winter. But um, I went there, I met the coaches. They were very new coaches. The program hasn't won Big Ten um, championship before, so they were like, they, they just made me feel welcome. They were like, you come in here, like we're gonna make sure you are the like the, the man here. We're gonna like do everything we can to push you to the next level, and we're just gonna like pretty much push you to be your best, you know. And it, it just felt different. So then I went to UNC um, to visit. I just didn't feel the same way. You know? And also, they've already won big, like won uh, what was it the ACC bunch of times. They've won national championship. And for me, I always said to myself, if I'm gonna be at a place, I want to be at a place that started something new. How cool would it be to be the first group of guys to win the championship for this school? For me, that would be more special than a school that every year that wins the championship. So, and that was for me the main reason why I chose to go to Michigan. And at the end of the day, we. Uh, we ended up doing that, so, and I was very, very proud about that. The whole day was just like, it, it was fun, but it was I, was, I was nervous. But I had my family there with me. I have my agent there with me, so it kind of makes everything better. And the minute I heard my name called, I was like, just so excited, because I was like, now, like, the, the real task, like, starts, you know. What does an ideal future look for you? I just want to play. I just want to play. So, um, and I think one of the things I guess Dallas hasn't really done with me is give me the opportunity to be on the field. Um, when I was given the opportunity last year, I came in and I scored. Um, but I don't control that, so I can't. Um, I, you don't know how the decisions I make, so I can't really say anything. What I can do is just show that I can play. You know. Hopefully, if they don't give me the chance, hopefully different MLS team will give me the, that opportunity. So that's all like for me I can I can say, you know, like just keep working hard. What advice do you have for young Africans, you know, who want to create football? Um I think the only thing I can say is just never let that dream die, you know. And I know it's like so easy to let it die because the opportunity is there are so limited, but like I always say to myself and the people around me, like you don't have control about what's gonna happen, so all you can do is just always work hard and, and, and then just train to, your, train to your best potential. Uh, you never know when the opportunity is gonna come. Just keep dreaming and uh, keep having hope and keep enjoying the game, because the game always brings smile to everyone, and especially Africans, we love playing, and that's what, it's our escape and it always makes us happy so um, just never forget that and always keep playing.